This is fresh off the press from Russia. This is an image of the Sistine Chapel, of course. And look at how they think in terms of laser therapy. That's what they think of. Look, you know, this is the energy that God used. It was light, you know, in the beginning, let there be light. So they're, they, they really appreciate what laser therapy is about. And there's some really interesting things. I've summarized a lot of that in this presentation, but there are some very interesting studies. Um, a lot of it is not translated, but we have little synopsis. And that is uh, the headache in laser therapy. Because when you try to get your hands on this research, A, it's going to be in another language. Uh, B, all you're going to be able to get is the abstract. And then you're not going to know, well, wow, they did this, but how? Because it's not written out. OK, so you're constantly having to invent, invent, invent. All you know is, oh my god, it's got the potential that if I can get blood out of the body, irradiated, put it back in, I can help my patient with diabetes. How can I improvise that in this country? We're so limited, you know. And even in, and you know, you know, technically, we're not supposed to be examined orifices as chiropractors. So. You know, go to Oregon and you can deliver babies and do minor surgery. So you have so many restrictions that, that you have to work. Why it is a, uh, besides the fact that the patients can't stand up straight if they close their eyes, so if they get up on a ladder, they're going to fall. And hello, here we have our geriatric patients. The worst thing that can happen to a geriatric patient is to fall. And they know it, and they're terrified of falling. They're absolutely terrified of falling, rightfully so. Um, even a young person, you know, I develop Lyme disease. I, contracted Lyme disease from a tick bite last year, this time of year. Um, the way that I finally knew that I couldn't keep going is I fell. And the minute you're down on the ground, it's like, oh my god, I can't control my body. Huge awakening. Time to get help. <laughs> right? <laughs> Usually kind of past that point. All right. The past pointing. When they fail the past pointing, and it's a kid, even if they're an adult, they fail that past pointing. What you're going to say is, do you feel clumsy? Do you spill things a lot? Because that's proprioception. Your arm is trying to get to a cup, and it's someplace else. And you might spill it, because you're not actually controlling that. You don't have it. It's autonomic. When patients compensate, what they're trying to do is recruit everything they've got. And so they'll compensate with it by doing it fast. The minute they do it fast, you know you got positive, but make them slow down anyway because you want to see how positive is this, okay? They'll compensate with this, and the other thing I didn't tell you is how they'll compensate is they'll look, they'll watch their feet to do the test. They have to, and they'll fall over, okay? And they don't want to fall over. We know falling over is not good. We're upright people. So how many of you guys saw positive tests with this? How many saw really severe positive tests with this? All three blow out on the cerebellum with a uvula deviation. We saw that right here in this example. And you have that there. You know, you're really sick. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, I want somebody who wasn't. He wasn't. You weren't bad. I watched no, that. He wasn't bad David, would you come up here? I want to show you how to make him bad. Do you want me to help? Oh, yeah. Make me bad? I make you I've bad. been working so hard to I be know. good. And he's going to be tough. <laughs> He's bad. Hard on I'm going to show you how to make him sick as a dog. No, 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 no. I'm, uh, but I'll fix it. Not intentionally. <laughs> I don't think this is a... <laughs> you don't want to be the guinea pig? Yeah, Come on. Let me this explain one. it. Don't worry about it. That's just going to be that he's going to get it right. We'll, we'll, we'll find a bunch of positive things. What I did... Now, this, these are standard clinical tests. They're written up in any neurological textbook, okay? But what I did with this test is I took it and I applied it to allergy testing. And the first thing when you talk about allergy testing with your patients that you need to tell them, because they're wrong about what allergies are. They're absolutely wrong. The f they talk about the immune system. The first thing that is impacted with allergies is the nervous system, the neuraxis, okay? It's the nervous system, and you'll catch it that fast, and you'll catch it without having to inject them with that stuff, 
and, and getting them sick the way the medical doctors do, okay? You'll find it before they even know it. And then you can ask them all kinds of questions. So what we want is to find, if we, if we can find a, uh, an allergen for you. Are you allergic to anything? Mm -hmm. Anything you might be allergic to? You know, um, Excuse me, just a second. I'm going to find things that you might be allergic to. Go ahead. Um, I, I tended not to be allergic to many things. So. Okay, good. He's not allergic to anything. Good. Well, no, I'll tend. <laughs> but yeah, that, you got that some hot stuff, water to put in that um, styrofoam? Mm -hmm. What'd you say? Yeah, those three things I don't. These three things. Okay, we're going to use them as an allergy. Oh, dairy could be horrible. Dairy could be horrible. Yeah. We started off not being allergic. No, I'm just thinking. No, 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 listen, yeah. this is how patients talk. I'm sure. not really allergic. And then they'll start thinking, and then we'll all start clicking yeah. in. So what we want to see is, what does this really do, these things? What do they really do to the nervous system? Um, you know what? Let's have somebody behind him to catch him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move this chair. Okay, we're just going to do the Bromberg, okay? Because i got to give him a cuff, so we're going to have to do it with one hand. And first, no, uh, he stands automatically like that. All right, now he passed all his tests, but he does have a tendency to want to brace himself. All right, so, and I think well, he knows. that's ballet training. There you go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. I think he knows something's coming, so he's getting ready. <laughs> so go ahead, stand behind him, seriously. Put your and you want me to, be, ready to, to be this way? I do. And I want you to stand with your eyes closed. We'll observe him without the stimulus. He's not too bad. He's really not too bad. Mm -hmm. He's got a slight sway, okay? Let's see if we can change that. Keep your eyes closed, but try holding that for just a second. He's got coffee in his hand. And I forgot to ask if it was detox. De I mean, decaf coffee. He's not doing too bad. When we get it through the, 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 the styrofoam, I'm going to give you a sloppy sample of coffee. Do yeah. you see an egg piece? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm going to wrap this up. <laughs> Put that in your hand, see if that makes a change. See if you change right to your son for a minute. Oh, yeah, nice. whoa, did you catch that? There's the caffeine. Okay, got that. <laughs> so we got a positive influence with caffeine. Um, can you hold this in your hand for me? Still with my eyes closed? Yes, please. You're all right with that. Do you see a change? I mean, it's coming forward and back. You can't see it. I can see it from the yeah. side. And you see it. She's in a position to find it. Sometimes it helps to come to the side of the patient. He looks like he's starting to spiral almost. All right. Getting this? Yeah. Compens no, Compensate. What do you feel then? Well, I'm in the spiral. Here's this. Yeah. Yeah, I wow. like that one. Oh, baby. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's a hot one. Oh, that's, ooh. That's, 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 that's that headache, that's that headache pill. what you got. What do you mean, sweet and low? Sweet and low. Oh, uh, sweet and low. Aspartame. Aspartame. Yeah, that's, that's that headache maker. Neurotoxic. Aspartame. Neurotoxic. Translates into brain tumors. Long-term use. We've had a tenfold increase of brain tumors since we've introduced Aspartame and all these you know, other fictions. This says <coughs> saccharin. Oh, saccharin. It, it same thing. Well, they pulled saccharin. Well, they did all kinds of studies with saccharin, the yeah. same thing. Okay, here we go. So, yeah. so aspartame. Watch, watch the aspartame. Watch these fake sugars. Here's our, our dairy. It, it, I feel like I'm wavering. i got to really put attention to Oh, don't. Just trying to let it go so you can demonstrate it. He's compensating. He doesn't want to go. There you go. There it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Guess what I found? I found a dairy allergy. Oh my God, this guy's in trouble. Let's see how far away he can be from dairy. Okay, close your eyes. About six feet. <laughs> wow. Yep. Got it? <laughs> I can feel it. It's almost like a magnetic wave. You can feel the resistance. Like when you're pushing away a magnet. Now, Noje, the reason why I came up here is it's not here. Noje is a French. Uh, a, a wonderful French physician, and for many years he's been doing um, auricular therapy. Noget uses uh, palpation of um, the uh, the pulse to determine if you have an allergen. So here you get this this wonderful thing. You have illustrations in your book, by the way. Um, you get the vagus nerve. You get uh, you get three different uh, cranial nerves here. But and and of course all the representation of every organ in the body in the ear. You come close. Ooh, 
Ooh, I knocked him over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my eyes are open. Yeah. yeah. See, because I, I knocked him over, but, you know, if I do it here, and you come close to that ear, ooh, you're going to get a change, okay? You can also palpate that change by taking the pulse. It's called the vascular autonomic signal. You take the pulse, you get a regular pulse, and you hold it, you test it, you bring the allergen close to the ear, and you'll get what, what will feel like a boom of the pulse here, okay? That's not the quickest way to work, unless you're real good with pulses and, and stuff like that. But it's just another phenomenon. You'll see references a lot to Noget's work. Um, that's who he is. The acupuncturists love him. He's contributed profoundly to laser therapy and to healing using uh, this type of energy stuff. So uh, just for your reference, that's an autonomic uh, vascular signal. When you talk to the acupuncturists who are on the cutting edge, they'll know what you're saying and you'll know what they're saying, okay? What I love about laser therapy is it's interdisciplinary. It brings everybody together on the same page. Okay, so we've got that. Now, can we fix this guy? Do you want to leave him like that? My oh, God, if he walks into a dairy farm, he's in trouble. If he gets there a cow, what we could do for her? <laughs> oh, cheese does the same thing for you. The right? cow's probably but not yeah, the problem. Guess what? Yeah. I thought we can muscle test for that, too. Boop. Hmm. Now let's find out what organs we got. We're going to therapy both of us. Let me switch hands here. Um, sure. Do you want to organ systems? You want to step to the, the side. Yep, the sideways. There yeah, you now go. Here, bring that deltoid. There the we go. Okay. Perfect. Watch the testing. Positioning is very important because they can, they're going to want to compensate. They're not going to put it in the best position for you. They're going to want to stay strong. Yeah, the whole thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got the dairy in your hand? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I got one good organ. No, you had the dairy in your hand. That's okay, why. It's too long. Okay. It's become long. This is liver. You have liver. Gallbladder. Gallbladder. Definitely. Spleen. Increase. Small intestine, large intestine, um, um, granatal, bladder, kidney. Okay. okay. So all the ones got strong actually, the ones were involved with that. So what we had is hit lung, liver, uh, spleen, large intestine, granatal, that's it. Okay, so it's a, uh, it was making mucus, um, the liver can't break it down. This, he's having an immune response with the spleen, and it's it's affecting him with the uh, gonadally, and I'm not sure what that might be, but it could be uh, a hormone in the milk. Okay. We well, you just had that yogurt for breakfast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So listen, guys, did we find out something important for this patient? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is this like crucial to their life? Because we are a dairy country. <coughs> things are made with dairy products. Oh my goodness! People with dairy allergies really suffer. Let's fix it. Cool. That fast? Want to fix it that fast? Cool. Yep. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. All right. Here. Tell you what. <laughs> you got a restriction with your food. After I treat you for two hours, please, I'm going to ask you not to pick up or touch or eat anything that has dairy product in it. Okay? That's not too much to ask. It used to be a 24-hour limitation. So I'm going to give you a shortcut to it. And I'm going to show you. You got your socks off? We're going to need the socks off. Come sit. Do you want to use a laser pointer for this? Sorry, you cross in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And thank you. Sure. We're gonna keep that milk on him. Oh. Thank you. And at that point, they're not gonna want to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> so just tell them it's okay. I like half and half. So. There you go. <laughs> so he's got half and half. That's our sample, by the way. We should have said All right. that. He took his shoes off. Would you have asked him to take his shoes off? Hmm? He took his shoes off. Would you have asked him to take Yeah, you know why? Because i got to get to the acupuncture points I'm going to demonstrate for you. This is how you clear allergies. And I want you to broaden your thinking on what an allergen is. Please. It's not just mold. It's not just food. It's things they put in their body. You can do this and eliminate the side effects of their medicines. It can help tremendously uh, with all those things. And I will tell you that when you do this, it will detoxify the to uh, some of the toxins. And I had a, an example of a patient. He brought in his favorite beer. His wife wanted him to cut back on drinking, and it was in the bottle. It was that, that was his label, that's what he loved. 
So we wanted to slow him down. And he was ready to do that. It wasn't that he was an alcoholic, but it was in the family, so they were concerned. When I treated him, now remember, we didn't open the bottle. I treated him holding the bottle. That room smelled like a brewery. Mm -hmm. And do you remember ether used to be in the old sure. days the only thing they'd knock you out with for your anesthetic? If you hit ether on a patient, even our ages, you'll get the ether coming out of their breath. It'll detoxify it. It's absolutely mm -hmm. fascinating. It's a problem for you, Doc. Mm -hmm. It's a problem for you clinicians. Because if they're going to be giving off toxins, you be careful, you'll be exposed to it. You've got to keep an air filter in your office, in your room. All right? We have one that we move around all the time. So depending on what you're doing, pay attention to that for yourself because you, just like these dentists removing uh, mercury, you don't want to be exposed to that stuff you know, and it will come out. That's why you want to pay attention to touching the patient too because it will come out and, and, and touching the patient. So what I'm going to start with is that we had a lot of organ systems that were involved, right? But you just hold one hand here. Don't cross your feet. Don't cross your hands. So this is Part of this is Nambudrapod's allergy elimination therapy. Part of this is uh, from uh, the BioSet system, and <clears throat> all of it put together with an addition is uh, Dr. Keppel's allergy elimination therapy. How's that? But I want to give credit mm -hmm. to Dr. Nambudrapad, who is phenomenal. If anybody here has the opportunity to study uh, with her, please uh, go ahead and do that. She's, she's just wonderful. Um, and uh, also the same thing with Dr. Cutler. Dr. Cutler has a book that is great called Winning the War Against Asthma and Allergies. It does give this information in that book, so you'll have a real good foundation in those textbooks. And then from there, you just add your laser therapy stuff I'm going to teach you, and you'll have Dr. Kevin's approach. Okay, so what we're going to start with is we're going to stimulate his sympathetic nervous system, and I'm going to use that with the laser. He's got clothes on, so what I'm going to use is a, a, a one of my new lasers here. And when you get a chance, I want you talking to David about this laser because it's great. Um, and it has a lot of different wavelengths in it. It's safe for the eyes. It's portable. It's pretty. When you get the battery in it. Um, and it has different frequencies. And you can get this program so that uh, you can program it for allergies. And you can have um, Rife's work programmed into the frequency of the light. So you can program it for several different things. But I'm just going to ask, can you turn, uh, maybe or stand for me for something? I know you're going to be dizzy, but turn to the, to the, the here, here we go. Cut that light over there for me. I want you to see this, because it's so cool. It's just really cool. <laughs> All right, look at that. Isn't that pretty? And your patients will go, ooh. ooh. <laughs> As it is. But look here. I'm starting at the, the neck. You just took a very deep breath. I don't know if you didn't see it, but it was all the shoulders and everything. Okay, starting at the neck. At the suboccipital. Slowly scanning. And mm -hmm. I'm staying away so it'll make a big X for the camera, but you can bring it close onto the body. Okay, and I'm just scanning slowly down the whole sp spinal cord here, the spinal column. We're going to do that three times. Look. Yeah, that's the third time he's self-adjusted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Making some changes here. Look at that. Yeah, shaking it off. All right, but he's still struggling because he's got it in his hands. Right? Come sit down. Can we put the, bat, the light forward. back on? Karate chop. Turn the light on, please. Thanks very much, Wendy. Okay. We're going to karate chop like this, okay? Stimulating the spinal cord starting from T1 down. Okay, I'm tapping, tapping, tapping. And you can do it any way you want, okay? But you can also do this with an activator. But what I want you to do that's different is I want you to um, to breathe like a puppy. Okay, there we go. And we'll just do that a couple times. And good, and relax and sit back up. And there, take another deep breath. What that does is it shortens the amount of time. Now instead of a 24-hour avoidance, he only has a two-hour avoidance. We'll do it three more times. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get it down to yeah, a minutes, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Now, we're coming here to the hand. Actually, switch this to your other hand so I can demonstrate this. I'm going to demonstrate this because you can do this now with this little laser here. 
and I use this type of a laser for years for this. This is an acupuncture point. It's close your hand. It's right at the web here. Okay, it's large intestine, a meridian, and you're going to hold that. And I'm holding him. Do you see me holding him? Uh -huh. He just took a breath, and what I just monitored was his cranial rhythmic impulse. Tells me, boom, he's done. Nobody has to tell me when my dose is finished because I know. Because you're holding it's his unique hand. Unique to that patient, unique to that substance, unique right now and then. I know. Because I read his body, his body told me. And you're going to teach that? I'm going to teach that in two seconds. Ready? Come to this side, watch closely. Come Same place on the other hand, right to left. He's in a still point, he's not moving, he's not moving, he's not moving. Ooh, he started to rotate. He's cleared. Okay? Now I gotta get a chair. I, and, I, and I'll tell you, okay, this is where I absolutely love laser therapy because I treat uh, special needs children and when I have to, you know, they move a lot. You can't always get these uh, wonderful people to sit for you. Mm. They have their agenda. And if you're not keyed into what their brain is doing, you're on the outside of their world with autistic patients. So you got to just kind of flow with it and figure out what you can do. Dave and I have talked about autism. He's done some wonderful things with autism. But what I like about it is, look, I can stand up and shoot it. I don't have to bend down, and I can still have an impact. And here we're on a liver point. Think of this as the thumb. Here's your, here's your big great toe and your second toe. It's just like the thumb. You go to that point. I'm not monitoring him because I'm kind of being smart, but here. He's already cleared it. Uh -huh. Yeah, did you know when you did it? Yeah, I can feel it. Did you hear him? You want it clear. I'm getting dizzy holding him, so i got to let go. You gotta watch it. If you're touching a patient, they've got an allergen, their system is gorked, you touch them, you're gonna be swaying. You're gonna get nauseated, you're gonna throw up, take your hand off them. If you ever want to know what a patient is feeling with a specific thing, touch them. <laughs> it will make you sick like them. Autistic patients who can't communicate. If you put your hands on them, you'll know exactly how they feel when they get exposed to dairy because even family members will say, oh my God, I can't do this anymore with them because we do surrogate tests and there's our final. He's done. So you, you, did, you didn't, didn't matter with, your, with the hands right or left, left or right? Doing it, doing well, I think you should just make a pattern so you remember you've done it. Otherwise, you might miss something. So do it as a course of routine. Start with the hands. Start from the right to the left. Patient knows what to expect after a while. Go finish that side. Go to that side. Always go to that side. Okay. So you just you know, finish up again. You just watch and just put, put the body changes and see if there's a change come about. Is that right? Well, you might see it. You might not. It might be poof, no big deal. <coughs> Give them the two hours. Ask them sometimes a dare you want to say just for cautions. You know, do the 24. And then they'll come back and say, oh my god, I, I, I ate something, I didn't even think about it. Because you know what, they're not averse to it. Sure. If they're allergic, they'll try to avoid it, they'll think, they'll know. And, uh, and then you reach out and say, oh no, you did it, you cleared it before, you know, you did fine. Okay? Um, this is called closing the gates. The next function is closing the gates. Okay? It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But we're going to add more. Because, oh my god, did you see how many organ systems he had? Ooh, he was in trouble. So. Um, let's go to the vagus nerve, and you have this in your book. If you open your page, you'll have a wonderful illustration of the, of the areas uh, of the vagus nerve here. We know that we saw a lot of cerebellar dysfunction with this. So let me show you where that page is so we can really get you keyed into this anatomically. Oh, this is the second hand. All right, it's in the back, and you start seeing all your pictures. Kind of different. Did you get no, it's not here. Ah, I'll get that picture to you. I'm sorry, it's not here. <laughs> uh, tomorrow at the, at the office we have it. Um, and here, we're going to go to the tragus, right down the ear, right in front of the tragus. That's your vagus nerve. Yay, we got another way to fix the vagus nerve. So we go to the tragus and we hit that. Watch it. Rest, repair, recuperate. Wayne of the parasympathetic system. 
and go down here because there's a place behind his ear at, look, right where we palpate and right where we go to adjust the atlas, we get the, the uh, hypoglossal nerve. And guess what? Here, we can come here in the ramus of the jaw. Boy, what are we doing here? We're resetting him, huh? Excuse me, I'm coming from him. And look, he must have fallen asleep. I was going to say, his whole mm -hmm. settled slouch. Yeah, he wants to fall asleep. He's getting bored. No, he wants to fall asleep. You've got him in a parasympathetic uh, condition here now. Because what happens is you go into sympathetic override, and I know David's lifestyle. He's, woo, you know, he's very dedicated to laser therapy. So he's all over the country with it. So here's your sympathetic override. Running from tigers to airplanes, my God, in two hours trying to get here just to get to the airport and all that stuff. Okay, you're bringing up the sympathetic, uh, parasympathetic, rest, repair, recuperate, and we're trying to balance it. But for a minute, he's going to be, woo, more parasympathetic. You okay? Yeah. He cleared his throat. What do we know about that? Lesopharyngeal impacted that just now. And he's probably going to start draining mucus. <coughs> okay, so that's good. That's a good change. And look at his glossy eyes. Uh -huh. <laughs> glossy eyes. <laughs> so, that's a fun way of fixing allergies. Remember, uh, you can also just do the entire ear. We had so many organ systems out, but if you get the parasympathetic system, you're going to turn on most of the organ systems. Okay? Mm. And then when you go back the next day for a cerebellar <coughs> test and you hand them that allergen, they won't be positive for anything. They won't be falling over nothing. <coughs> and they'll say, wow, that's incredible. I'll tell you how I found that. I found that by working on a set of twins. Okay, um, I had a patient who had a, a terrible history of uh, multiple chemical sensitivity. <coughs> very, very ill. She was so sick, she could barely leave the house. She had to be assisted. Uh, when I first saw her in my waiting room, she was sitting there. She looked like a concentration camp victim, you know, the wasting. Uh, I felt so badly, and she said, Dr. Keppel, you don't remember me, do you? And I said, I'm sorry, but I don't. And she said, you saw me a number of years ago before I got sick like this. I mean, that was how bad she was. I didn't recognize her. I began treating her uh, in this manner, and we started <coughs> getting her functional. And boy, her life turned around. And then one day she said, you know, I've got a daughter who's having cognitive problems. And she's a twin. Her sister's doing fabulous. Do you think she's got some of my stuff? And, and I said, well, bring her in. And what I was doing at the time is I was uh, palpating her cranium. And I'll show you that. That's our next big thing that we're going to do. I'm going to teach you cranial rhythmic impulse. So I was monitoring her cranium. The cranial bones move in relation to the function of this uh, production of cerebral spinal fluid. It expands out and it contracts in. And the bones will just move all over the place, okay, if it's, if it's not functional. If it's functional, you'll get nice, smooth, synchronous rhythm of the cranial bones, all right? Well, I know that if you hit your head and you have any other histories of insult to the cranium, would you like to go sit down and rest? I'm, I'm You're good? Rested. You don't mind sitting here? You don't want to move from a chair. This is like copacetic. Uh, opiates, remember the opiates? Opiates released with laser therapy? Opiates. Do you see it? Okay. So, <laughs> and drainage. <laughs> okay. Um, you'll watch, you can watch the progression of it as it clears. It's very interesting. So anyway, I said, okay, well, okay, head injuries, we know that causes stuff. I want to check her out for head injuries. Well, I put my hands on her head. She's the only patient, I swear, in the history of my 20 years of practice that I could put my hands on. And she was perfectly clear. But she had all the symptoms of head injury stuff. I said, well, oh, man, what do I have here? I said, well, okay, let me start testing for allergens. And I muscle tested just like I showed you for allergens. But I couldn't find anything. Couldn't find a single thing. And then I, I muscle tested and I had, um, we hit something. Oh my God, I went through hundreds of remedies. We hit something. You know what it was? Newspaper ink. What? She's a student having trouble. Newspaper ink. Newspaper ink is made of soy. So now she's having problems with soy, which is in a lot of different foods. It's a filler in a lot of different foods, by the way. 
Um, she's probably having estrogen problems because we have a, a phytoestrogen here, and maybe we need to look at estrogen too. And from there, we need to balance other things. But wow, newspaper is the only thing I found. And that, it, it, and she had it in her hand, and she was laying on the table. And I said, I, I can't believe I didn't find anything with her cranium. I went back. I put my hands on her head. Oh my God! You would have thought someone had hit her with a two by four. Her cranial motion was so aberrant, it was just wringing her brain, like this. I said, oh my God, what am I seeing? I said, wait a minute. I took it out, put it aside, went back. She was clear. I said, oh no, I, I don't understand this. Went back, put it in her hand, all over the place, all over the place. I said, wow, how am I going to tell people about this? This is an incredible insight. And I said, well, I've got to be able to demonstrate it using, not everybody can do cranial palpation. I've got to demonstrate this using other things. But she was so severe, I knew she was going to talk positive for something. So I stood her up and I did the cerebellar test. She blew out so bad her mother had to catch her. Just from holding that the newspaper. Okay, so that's how I found it. She was a twin, her sister didn't have it. She had it, now I knew I was onto something. I started examining my patients in that manner. And I can, I really, in my mind, confirmed that before anything happens, your nervous <coughs> system's going to respond to an allergen. And that will explain the hidden allergies and why a patient will come and say <coughs> they can't find it with the testing. But I know I'm allergic to this. That's why. They miss so much in that field. Okay? So, I'm going to have a, have a break. You want to come back for lunch? We'll practice cranial palpation. Can I ask a question? So, how you found that with her? Had the realization she had, she didn't have a father on board when you first started with her, or did she? She did. She didn't. Ha yeah. she, she didn't have anything to show cerebellar stuff. So what? What you went through? You might have gone through this. I don't know if you have a kit where you have all different kinds of allergens. Right. You mm -hmm. probably tested all the kits and didn't find yeah. anything. That's so right. You just kept looking for things in the office, any possibility, and then you got something. Since you got a father on board. Well, no, not positive on board. But what I how I found it was I was directly on the cerebellum as a cranial pad. Okay. And it blew up. It was doing this to her whole cranial rhythm, all over the place. No, I'm not good at that. So it'd be well. You will be. Oh, I yeah. will be. I'll be positive. I you. will. I will make sure when you leave this room <laughs> that you are an expert in palpating the cranial rhythm, okay. because we're going to use that as a phenomenal tool for the rest of the class. Okay. Right. Well, I just want to take it beyond that point. Because if I was out in the public, if I did something like with that, and I probably went on laying down, so going to use. Could get hold of head. I could give him something like that newspaper print. Yep. She'd now be responsive, just like David. Absolutely. Did. Okay, and that's how you can find it that way. It's oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And you know what? You can do the muscle test and find it, okay. and and you'll know ahead of time. Or you can observe a patient, and you'll know ahead of time. Lots of times they're eating. When I demonstrated this at, in my lecture with Dr. Nambudrapad's uh, group, oh, and there was about 150 doctors there. They got up out of their chairs. They'd never seen anything like it. They were like standing watching this phenomenon. It is absolutely incredible to demonstrate to patients. I don't know, Penny's, you know, I do it with Penny all the time. We don't go back and forth with, you know, the whole routine, because now my patients know, well, when you muscle test, oh, we're going to fix it. I don't know. So, um, but as far as I know, no one's ever connected the cerebellum, cerebellum test to this type of analysis. I'm, not, oh yeah, I'm, really I'm, I'm, clear, I'm clearing uh, my mucus sinuses standing next to you. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> is that a good thing? Well, yeah, yeah I yeah. guess. <laughs> so uh, what I'm assuming is that when he comes back, we see David in six months or a year from now, he should still have to be Tomorrow. Problem. Well, I mean, that should carry, carry itself on in the years, months, years. He should, once that clears. Tomorrow it'll be cleared. And he'll probably clear. We can ask how quick it'll clear. Well, oh, no, no, I'm asking how long it's going to last. Can you hold that for a while? Yeah, and then okay. I put okay. it down. Yeah. And that's more, more than how long. Okay, well, let, let me address that. That's a very good question. You want to have them holding this for a while, okay? Um, it, it, so you want to keep that in their hands five to ten minutes, and then they leave and they don't touch it again. All right. Mm -hmm. So, um, but what what your question is is how long will this last? And what I will say is 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 this. Um, sometimes with dairy, you still need to clear other things. You might need to clear the the casing from the cheese. You might need to look at the sugars. Mm -hmm. Um, and you might need to look at, um, like I said, we got the steroids and other aspects that are in that. Yes. Wheat the same way. Sure. Clear them for gluten, and you have to uh, clear them for um, additives to the wheat. Oh my God, what they're doing to our food chain now. Mm -hmm. 
So you, you have to really work hard sometimes on these things. Will he stay cleared for a long period of time? If he gets an exposure to something weird in, in, in like heavy radiated milk, strontium mm -hmm. 90, which is in milk, okay? Uh, if you get a heavy exposure because somebody shoots off a rocket, God forbid, um, it, it, you might have to work on that. You might have to work on that from different avenues. So initially, you're going to do real good with all this stuff. Don't worry about it. You're going to get some hard, hard patients. They give me a call, I'll give you suggestions. But the majority of your patients, you fix them for milk. I had one woman, oh, God bless her. She had a family of six. She wanted to have another baby. She was so allergic to milk and dairy, so allergic to it. And we started working on it and going through things, and then she still, she wouldn't go out and test it. And six weeks later, she came back. She was hugging me. She said, Dr. Keppel, I thought I would have to die and go to heaven before I could eat lasagna again. <laughs> <laughs> I treated all of her children and cleared them. And I'll show you how to do six kids at once, so it doesn't have to be a pocket book. Mm -hmm. And uh, we treated her new baby in utero, the baby was born with no allergies. Mm -hmm. So you, as you clear, if you've got a pregnant patient, you're, you're clearing your allergies using these types of techniques, uh, you're helping that baby, it's not going to be born with those compromises. So this is a whole other thing, I mean, we, we can talk about this as a whole uh, entity in itself I for, for some, to get more. At some point. <coughs> and all I want you to do, excuse me, is close your eyes and look straight forward, please. How you doing? Don't hold your breath. You moving? I feel like I am a little bit. What are you feeling? I feel like I'm swaying. Which way are you swaying? To the right. To the right, just going off to the right. Okay. That's a positive Romberg. Bring your arms straight out like a zombie. Both hands. You're a zombie. Yeah, you're a zombie. And I'm getting busy just touching you. Excuse me a little closer and you see the sway even more pronounced in that posture. Do you see the sway, Dr. Ruth? Sure do. Can you describe it? Lovely. <clears throat> she's going side to side this way okay. and she's going a little front to back as well. Yeah, there is a front to back. I just saw it. From the side you can catch the front to back movement, okay? We're going to do now past pointing test with the very tip of that finger. Now, Dr. Ruth's behind you if you get dizzy. Okay, and bring your arm straight out. Did you catch that compensation? Fast. How Basically. fast did she do that test? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at it. She's smiling. Do this real slow. Oh, oh, don't smile. Same, <laughs> Same, Same test, finger. very slowly. Boom. Lots of hesitation. There's the compensation again. Okay, bring your arm straight out. Do you see how many ways you compensated? Try to do this again with a slow movement. Did that better, huh? Except her postural sway is still exaggerated yeah, to the left right, every time enough. she works. Okay. No, she, excuse me, to the right. She Postures found her. She found her nose on the right. On the um, on the left, she had a little harder time. Yeah, to the right. Bring your arms down, and Dr. Rand. Step back. I want you to back up. Keep your eyes open, please. Just back up so we got room. Now, there's all these wonderful little dots on the floor. I want you to pick a dot and follow it as though it's a line. With, don't look at it if you don't need to, okay? But you're going to do the drunk driving test. Heel toe, heel toe. Right to the, that's it. And walk right straight forward. <coughs> do you see where her eyes are? Down. down. Her eyes are down. Do you see really what she has to do with her up. hip? She's doing some she's kind of both of them, yeah. Do you see what she's doing with her hips? She's bringing her leg way out to get that planted. But you know what she's not she's doing? doing. That's she's, that's okay. But she's not doing the ballerina. She's not doing the ballerina, but she's using the eyes for compensation, which is even a stronger compensation for balance. All right, you're positive for some cerebellar stuff. More than likely, there's a good possibility that we're seeing something with the upper cervical area, right? Occiput, atlas occiput. So what we're going to test next is that area. And we're going to do that quickly with a muscle test. So bring the arm straight out. Keep this arm. This is your anterior deltoid test. So it's got to be an anterior deltoid, not kind of a medial kind of an anterior deltoid, OK? So she's a strong in this position. <coughs> you can also test. Make it straight out. Not too far back, not too far medial. Thank you so much for letting us videotape you, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so guess what? We're just going to go and touch this area. Whoop, weak. Whoop. Oh, we get some indicators here. Now, 
Let's see if that's showing up physically on the body. Here's a chair. Go ahead and sit down for a minute. Did you want to do a close-up here? I sure do. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the deviation of the uvula and, you know, the roof of the palate. And if there is a problem, it'll go off to the side of involvement, which I'm, I know you're familiar with, and that's the vagus nerve, okay? However, first we have to see if your tongue's in the way. And if you can do this without a tongue depressor, so let me have you say, ah. Uh, okay, tip your head back. Gotta get in there. Uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Shoot. And actually, your test wasn't all that positive, but say that again. Uh, mm -hmm. so, it's on the left. That was the side of involvement, remember? It was the worst side for past points. Yeah. Well, it's on this but side. The sway was always. Doesn't matter. Don't go by the sway, it'll okay. mess you up. Just go by the point. Yeah, because you got a lot of things trying to compensate for that sway. So that's okay. not as accurate. So she's got a deviation of the u not the uvula, but the palate is collapsing. Okay. Well, the tongue. I need a laser pointer, guys. Okay. <laughs> to relax your tongue, what we're going to do is stimulate your um, glossopharyngeal, hypoglossal nerve first. And we can do that. And I need your feedback on this, okay? When I hit the when I hit the nerve, you might feel a sensation. It shouldn't be uncomfortable, but you might feel your tongue relax, or you might salivate. Okay, and I'm coming here. Here's the jaw. Here's the ramus of the jaw. You want to come? There. Anything? Okay. Feel it now? Yeah. Okay. So our tongue's relaxing, and all we're doing is that. We can reinforce that. Once we found the point, oh, we're going nice to the laser, and I'll come out of the way of the camera. Because we want to be able to get in there and have an impact. We're already having an impact on cranium when we're doing this. Okay? And that's the area. That's where the superficial uh, cutaneous innervation to the digastric muscle comes from that cranial nerve. It doesn't go to the digastric muscle, but it comes uh, superficially bef uh, right in front of it. And right in front of the, I'm a little anterior here, but it comes right in front of the, one of the you know, glands for salivation. Okay, so that's enough. Now if you say, ah, uh, and tip your head back, uh, that tongue just drops flat. It's out of the way. I don't need a tongue depressor. But if we did a gag reflex test on her, but you would probably find on the side of involvement an absence of that gag reflex. You have to test both sides of the throat. Most people don't know to do that. Okay? Most people just stick it in. Oh, they're gagging. You don't know which side of involvement we you got. You can do that right now. Let's see if we got an absent, thank you, gag reflex. Okay, yeah. Do you mind doing this? Okay. That's the side of involvement. She blinked, that's it. No choking. I was way back in her throat. Uh, she's got an absent gag reflex both sides. Okay. We got to bring up that tone. Okay. So what we're going to do is go in and adjust her atlas through the mouth. You know, when you shoot an x-ray, that's how you get a good view, isn't it, Pat? Yeah. Right. A to P. Yeah. You've been doing it for years, right? Open yeah. mouth. Yeah. A, a to P. Yeah. <laughs> but that's because you got a fascial plane there that you're going to shoot Time through. Gymnasium, though. It's right there. And say, again? Okay, there it is. Okay. Say again, uh -huh. You're a good singer, by the way. <laughs> so that's it. Now, if we want to reinforce that, we can go to the vagus places on, on the... Can you turn your head this way? That's good. You can go to the vagus right in front of the, uh, the tragus of the ear. There's a vagus point in acupuncture. Um, not Dr. Yenny, but Dr. Amaro with his acupuncture system, they refer to that as the Valium point. That is so uh, such a soothing point. So you can reinforce that. And I'm palpating the cranial rhythm. She was in a still point, now she's moving. And I'm doing that here at her shoulder. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. What does it feel like? I'm sure this feels relaxing. Valium point feels relaxing. Okay. <clears throat> We're doing nice things for her body that she's responding very quickly. There you go. She just really, that was very excellent. 
Vagus nerve, queen of the parasympathetic system. Where were you? Yeah. 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 There's your rest, repair, recuperation right there. Started. Okay. And you just start to see her cheeks flushing. She's got more color. Okay. And she's a little bit more alert. We still got a few things to do for her. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any allergens yourself? Allergies you know, reactive to? Not currently. Okay. One of the things that I didn't discuss earlier are what are the nutrients that will help with the laser therapy to function? And you want to know from your patient is, are, are they able to tolerate these nutrients? Are they using these nutrients? Are they present in the body? How are they functioning around these things? And so, uh, of course, what we have to think about then are the minerals because cytochrome, remember the cytochromes? We're impacted by minerals. Okay, so let's take a look at one that's very important, and that's iron. And let's see how she does with handling that particular mineral. And we can do that with, and slip your shoes off again if you don't mind. Remember now what we did, yes, Catherine? No, no, I was feeling. Oh, sorry. Remember what we did with this in terms of testing. She's a reactive. Mm -hmm. In terms of testing. Um, I had to get out of her aura because she's making me dizzy while I'm holding the iron. She's reacting. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, she's, she's reacting. She's on. Uh, Are you anemic? I don't know. You're not, not that you're aware of? Uh, put your fingernails out. Do you have any little white spots on your fingernails? No. Guess what white spots are? Zinc, thank you. Zinc. Okay, good. So we're going to look for zinc. We're also going to look for copper. Um, it, those are three things right off the bat that you want to pay attention to. And nickel. Nickel is sometimes a bigger factor in dental amalgams than mercury. Ha! It's cheaper. It's a major part of the amalgam also. So what we need to do is just have you bring your feet together. Let's go bring them all the way together. And she compensated, didn't bring them all the way together. Hold that in your hand. We're going to check for that romber. And you know what? If you start going um, A to P, I'm going to ask you to turn sideways so the camera can see. Close your eyes. This is the Romberg test repeated. How you doing? Don't hold your breath. Where are you going? Circle. You're going in circle. Is it a bigger circle than when you didn't hit? Oh, yeah. it's a big circle. Turn sideways so we can show the camera. Anyway. Thank you. Watch the movement. I'll stay right. Whoa! She's all over the place. She's very reactive to the iron. Okay, we got a problem because if we're going to really want our, our laser therapy to function, we got to clear her for this, and it'll be much more effective. Now, if we did the pass pointing, you'd see the pass pointing would be worse, so let's try that. Put feet together, bring your arms out, hold that in your body, unless you have a pocket. If you get a pocket, you can stick it in a pocket. With this hand, very slowly, touch the tip of your nose. She went backwards and halfway there she was doing this. I don't know if you saw that. Switch hands with this sample. Yeah. Try again. Yeah. Do you see it? Did you get your nose? She didn't. Did, did she do it? What did you see for compensation? Weaving. A little, yeah, mm -hmm. more weaving. Okay, bring your arms down. Uh, step back just a half a step and see if you can do uh, heel toe, heel toe directly towards the camera. Let's see if you need to compensate in any way. How are you it's doing? A lot harder. It's a lot harder, she says. Okay. Uh, oh, whoa! Oh, Sorry, there go the arms. I didn't mean to leave your side, but we had a problem. We got to fix it, and we got to fix it now. Now. It's imperative. She's not making hemoglobin. She's not, uh, there's no oxygen. Well, you can tell she breathes really that's shallow not about that. up her chest. It's I mean, not she's not getting stop. the air. That's a part of it. That's, a par that's what you're seeing sympathetically. I'm talking even more basically. Crucial. She's hypoxic. She's got no oxygen systemically. She's got no iron. She's not making hemoglobin. It'll take us twice as much effort with our laser to, to help her. Maybe not twice as much. Maybe another extra half a second. <laughs> Lasers work fast. We gotta fix you for this. I'm gonna do it right now, okay? And then after that, I'm gonna ask you for two hours not to not, not to expose yourself to anything that might have the, that mineral in it. So.
Uh, you could probably eat uh, greasy fries at McDonald's. That's got nothing, but if you get hungry, so. Okay, sit. There you go. I have a question. Yeah, let me demonstrate. Do you need me to? You okay? You uh, starting off? to tell me. All right, we'll take a break. What did you have for a question? If you tested on a few of those different minerals, could you I mean, do nice. them all at once? Yes, you I got teeth, baby. Or you have I wouldn't. Not for you're going to take your own teeth. Okay. If you needed to do a shortcut, it's a crapshoot whether or not you'll clear all of them. Okay. And these are so crucial to the body, these particular minerals. No, I just alarm. happen to have that as a homeopathic. Uh, Newton was kind enough to donate these to us. You can use any sample you want, even a vitamin pill. You want to try to isolate the iron as much as possible, so you're not testing the fillers, right? That was the first thing I noticed when I saw you, was you've got this little fluttery breath. How much time to get on one of those? Now, remember, <laughs> she's upper cervical, and as you're breathing, right. you but, but symptom-wise, that's the very first symptom <coughs> when I saw you come in, mm -hmm. that just... Okay, we've like got about four minutes left on this one, so right. if you want to go for it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have you lean forward and actually turn sideways so the camera can see this and just sit for me sideways. If you lean forward, what we can do with the Q1000 is this. Okay? And I have it set at a high frequency, so you're not going to see it blinking on and off. But there are different frequencies. <coughs> I'm just going to scan her. Uh, I'm going to do it actually kind of rapidly. This has infrared, it has laser, it has a blue light. It has a lot of different mixed frequencies. It is, um, I, I, I believe it's a class 2 laser. So at a class 2 laser, we're not very concerned in terms of eye exposure for anybody in the room or for her or for me. And that's good. Now we're going to ask you to pant <laughs> like a puppy. That's it. And I'm doing a little karate chop here up and down the spine. This is the sympathetic system, right? Okay, we're stimulating that. That's good. That shortens it in terms of avoidance. Turn around and sit forward for me, please. You're now I want to give credit again to Dr. Namudrapad because she was the wonderful genius who developed the majority of this technique. Now we're going to do specific acupuncture points, and it's referred to as closing the gates. You have your hand here. And we're going to come to the web, the hoku point. If you turn your hand, they can see it on the camera. Button. Okay, close the hand, and it's right there. This is what you get for being late, man. i got to catch you up. <laughs> there you go. And right there, you use the hoku point. In China, they use this point with laser. There's one doctor, a uh, wonderful research scientist with laser therapy. And he lasers this point as he does all of his dental retractions and extractions and all, all those painful maneuvers, and patients don't experience any pain. That's what he does for his dental. He doesn't use Novocaine or anything. I need your socks off. You can't shoot through clothes. It takes longer, but it, people do do it clinically. Here's your point. Think about the great toe like it's your thumb. And there you go. Oh, the door may be locked. There you go. Okay, so I'm getting both these points, and now I'm closing the gate. Coming right back to the beginning. Thank you. I'm not spending much time, as you see, because we can test and clear her cranial rhythm. Uh, it, it will clear the cranial rhythm, it will clear the still point very quickly. And turn your head, and here's the tragus of the ear, I'm anterior to it. There's your valiant point. Uh-huh, got parasympathetic. And look at the breathing. See the breathing shift come behind the ear. Turn your head the other way. <coughs> and here, and there, look at that breathing. Now she's getting oxygenated. That cerebellum's going to be on track real soon because we're clearing her. She's going to be able to handle the oxygen, all the you know, redox. It's all going to come through. That pathway will be cleared.